All right, welcome into the Thomas Fitch Sports Show, the final episode of the semester, and it's a good one. A lot of guests, as you can see now, we have a lot of guests. I'll introduce them in a second. We're recapping Texas's uh, loss, the Big 12 Championship, do a little preview of the Sugar Bowl, um, and talking just about everything else in the sports world. So, stick around. All right, so now joining me on the show, the roommates, we got Jacob Greenlee, Wade Adler in the back, and James, if you wouldn't mind peeking around for all those Instagram Live viewers. Um, and, you know, let's, let's start by breaking down the Big 12 championship game. Texas loses, um, unfortunately, but let's talk about what happened kind of overall. Let's, let's uh, well, okay, definitely some questionable calls in that game. Um, I would say my take on the game is it was a great team effort between Texas shooting themselves in one foot and the um, <laughs> refs shooting themselves in the other foot. And believe it or not, it's pretty hard to play without toes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think if you look at that game, you see, um, I mean, there were a lot of great plays from both teams, obviously. Oklahoma right. played a really good game. Uh, but I do still think that the Zebras uh, were the MVP <laughs> for the Sooners. <laughs> Uh, on this day, there were a lot of calls that were just kind of weird, and I, you know, right. this this show and you and I and all of us here, we are not blame the ref people, no. but wow, there were some just <laughs> strange calls that like ticky tack things. Yep, that Call, weren't just calling stuff one way wasn't consistent yeah. at all. But you know, in the end, I think Oklahoma looked like the better team. Yeah, out they there. they yeah. did look like the better team, and that was that was what I had said for a while was why why I'd rather play West Virginia is. It's hard to beat a good team twice, especially a team with now the Heisman Trophy winner, mm-hmm. Kyler Murray. He's just an incredible athlete. And there were a lot of plays where it's like you see it happen, you go, I don't know what you can do to stop him yeah. because he's just so so fast and so electric. Um, I also kind of think that um, we went into the game thinking OU's defense sucks. Right. Which they, they do. They do. But they showed up when they needed to. Yeah, they had their best defensive effort that game. And it was, I think we went into the mindset with, like, oh, we can match their score all Mm -hmm. the time, Mm -hmm. so we don't need to focus that much on offense. But when in reality, they played a heck of a game. Yeah, they did, and that that big safety in the fourth quarter, I mean, that was kind of what did it. That was a great call um, by the Sooners at the perfect time, yeah, giving him the win. But let's, yeah, let's start on the offensive side where, you know. It was kind of passing game excelled. The rushing game struggled. That was kind of the key. You look at Ellinger's stats, 23-36, 349 yards. Kind of did what he needed to do to get the win. Yeah. Well, uh, that's, that's kind of his thing is doing what he needs to do. Yeah. The, the, the kid's very, very talented, very good at uh, you know, making plays when he needs to. Yeah. But then you look, at, you look to the running game where Ellinger le- – whenever Ellinger leads the running game – you know it's not a great. I mean, and not only le- leading with forty-two mm. yards. Oh, yeah, not not great. Watson had thirty-nine on thirteen touches, and maybe the most surprising thing, Keontae Ingram only got four touches. Well, see, that might be part of the reason why the run game wasn't very good. Yeah. Right. Well, and, and I to mean, be I'm fair, sure he didn't believe her, but he but Ingram didn't do much much when he got it. He had four touches for nine yards. Overall, I mean, the, the team averaged two point eight yards. It really didn't matter who was running. Uh, they weren't getting many yards, but. The, the struggles in the running game, was this something y'all saw coming at all? No. <laughs> Not no. at all. The running game in the, the first OU game, that was our one of our right. best running games of the year. And yeah. so we thought it was going to be a good dual threat running passing mm-hmm. attack, and it just wasn't. Yeah, when you're playing a defense like Oklahoma that struggles to tackle, struggles to make plays when they need to, and just kind of is, sometimes looks lost, it's really right. easy to run over them. And I don't know what they did. They locked in, and they were very prepared. The line couldn't get a push. No holes were there. It was even hard to break tackles. Right. And that should have been easy because Oklahoma is not a good tackling team. Do you right. all think we just depended on Colin Johnson too much? And, like, we saw that mismatch and just yeah. went with it every time. Or not every time, but majority of the time rather than running. I, I'm not sure. I think they definitely saw that mismatch. And, you know, we could talk about Colin Johnson setting a Big 12 record, eight receptions, 177 and, yards. And uh, not, not, uh, not being named to the all-conference team. <laughs> right. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> but it wasn't like... It wasn't like they weren't at all. Like, they still ran the ball a decent number of times. It just wasn't working. Then you get to the second half where they're trailing by a lot and you're trying to get quick plays, quick touchdowns, mm-hmm. and you're having to go to the the um, the air more. But 
I think it just it the, the running game surprised me after you know even the West Virginia game that OU won the week before. West Virginia dominated in the air, obviously because OU doesn't have a great secondary. But they also whenever they ran, there were gaping holes up front, mm-hmm. and there was no tackling in the backfield. I mean, if it weren't for the blocked to the parking lot penalty, <laughs> West Virginia would have won that game. Right. Right, and then we're looking at a whole different eighty yard run scenario. Yeah, and Texas wins in yeah. that scenario. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, well, you know, when you say that, and I, I, I do think Texas would have been able to beat West Virginia, but like we mentioned earlier, like it definitely was not Texas's best performance of the year. Oh, no. Anywhere no. close. Yeah. Um, you know, struggled. Uh, and really, the big thing was penalties. You know, when you look at, yeah, the run, running game struggled. We'll kind of talk about the defense in a little bit, but how many yards, 100 plus yards of penalties to OU's like 30? Yeah. That's. Mm-hmm. And, and again, some, some were questionable calls but a lot of them was just texas shooting themselves in the foot yeah and it's hard to win a game against a good team when you're shooting yourselves in the foot and they you know it was a really they played a clean game back in october against ou and won the turnover battle there and they won the game yeah they don't do that on last saturday against ou and they lose the game so it's almost like uh, holding on to the ball and uh, not getting free yardage um, taken away is, uh, is a good, good strategy for winning. The Kansas State strategy. And, you know, they've, they've been remarkably successful with it. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about defense for a little bit. Um, what are y'all's takes on the defensive performance in the, in the game? Sad. That's what Donald Trump said, too. <laughs> a sad exclamation point. The number of touchdown-saving penalties that we had to take uh-huh. was yeah. upsetting. Yeah, there was pro- at least three or four touchdown saving penalties, which shouldn't happen in the same game. Yeah, I mean it was just it was just bad. I mean we didn't really get to uh, Kyler at all. No. I mean we did. I I don't know how many sacks we had, but I don't think it was more than two. I think yeah. it was two. Yeah, we got we hit him twice. Yeah, well, and and the reason for that obviously is Orlando going with his three-man rush and just dropping people back to keep him from running. And that's that's the I, threat. The, the run threat, obviously, like, stopping the run threat from Kyler was pretty good. It was. I mean, the I only... Thought, I didn't think that was... There was no, issue. like, long runs like he had in October. Yeah. It was all, like... Yeah. He might have had, like, a 10, 15-yard run, but that's yeah. going to happen. Oh, well, the fast. problem is those yeah. 10, 15-yard runs were on third and eight. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But that was, that was a struggle, was getting off the field. That's but, been a struggle at Texas for a while. Yeah. But overall, I mean, it, yeah, I, I think... There, there was a lot of Orlando trying to contain, and because of that, that means you're stacking the front seven, so you're having three guys rushing, but you're having, you know, four guys just sit there watching him, you know, waiting in case he runs, and then you have Chris Boyd and Devontae Davis back there on an island. And having to go on an island against Marquise Brown and C.D. Lamb is incredibly Ooh. tough. Yeah, and, you know, they actually made some pretty good plays in those positions. Yeah, no, I, I, I you know, it, it w- definitely wasn't Chris Boyd's best game, he had some mistakes, but for having to go against one of the best receivers, and, you know, I've said this all year long, he's had to go against the best receivers really in the nation because the Big 12 has some incredible athletes at the wide receiver position. So good that Colin Johnson's not on the Big 12 team. <laughs> yeah, or, you know, little Jordan isn't a, you know, semifinalist, finalist at all. But, um, you know, regardless, they're having to go, you know, he's having to guard Tylen Wallace and... Yeah. You know, all, you know, well, David Sills. He and only had to guard Brown. Tylen Wallace for three quarters, and he didn't do a very good job of that. <laughs> That's true. But, you know, you're having to go against the best guys. You're going to blow some plays. Yeah. It happens all the time in the NFL against the best receivers with the best cornerbacks guarding them. happens all the time in college football. Now, Chris Boyd did have a couple unfortunate pass interferences. Mm-hmm. Um, and there were a couple of those, though, that I thought maybe shouldn't have been called or weren't right. getting called the other way. Uh, little like you know tiny things that were contact and technically a foul out, but like didn't interfere with the actual motion of catching the football. Right. But I'm not gonna that happens. That. Yeah, and, you know the thing is when when you you watch refs, they make a lot of mistakes, and that's that's there, there's a reason they're at the college level. Mm-hmm. College football players make mistakes, so it makes sense that college refs are gonna make mistakes. They're not at a pro level. I mean, even pro. It's what people have been talking about after there were some questionable calls last night. There were a bunch of questionable calls in the Cowboys-Eagles game. They're going to make mistakes the same way that Gronk's going to miss a tackle. You know? <laughs> At the end of that, that's all just a weird <laughs> sentence. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, that was just... But, you know, the same way that, you know, best receivers are going to drop the ball. You know, a quarterback's going to throw an interception. 
It's no. going to happen. <laughs> what? Quarterbacks don't throw interceptions. <laughs> Not, Sam Not Sam. Well, he is like four in the year, so. Five. That's pretty good. Oh, it's incredible. It, it, it's <laughs> great number. <laughs> I'll take that. But the point is, refs are going to make mistakes, but when it seems that all the mistakes are very one-sided, mm-hmm. that's where it gets to the point where you kind of have to start talking about what's going on here. Yeah. And when they... The Caden Stearns interception that they went to the booth and reviewed. That <laughs> yeah, I don't know what was going on. I mean, they, I it was like an interception, but there was a face mask before the play, so it shouldn't have mattered. Yeah. And they go back and review it, and I swear what happened is when they called that review, somebody in their head goes, hey, guys, y'all messed up. You weren't supposed to review this. Take two minutes. Act like you're looking at something. Come back and say the play stands. <laughs> and that's exactly what they did. They went there. All, everybody in the stands is going, I don't know what's going on. They didn't say what they're reviewing, probably because – they didn't know what they were reviewing because I don't think they were reviewing anything. They came back and they said it stood. <laughs> yeah, and then for yeah, that was a weird play. Yeah, it it and and you know it was that it was you know they missed a false start on a play that OU scored on. They missed the um, illegal formation on OU. They missed uh, pass interference on Little Jordan on a big third down. Yeah, that you know again not saying Texas wins. But it definitely changes the game because oh, yeah. Texas converts that first down, has a chance mm-hmm. to go down and score. Again, not necessarily saying they're going to score. But they have a chance to score instead of having to punt. OU comes back. Big pass to C.D. Lamb. He fumbles. Texas gets the ball back. Safety. Game over. Yeah. You know? yeah. 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 You can't wear, you, you can't be a cape on the receiver when he's trying to jump for a ball. <laughs> right. I mean, that's a textbook call that was, I thought, blatant. I think everybody in yeah. the stadium thought it was yeah. blatant. I mean, I think even the OU people thought it was blatant. Right. Like that right. was That's a, where, you know, as an OU fan, you're like, no flag, no flag, no flag. You know, we, we do that as long as oh, yeah. when you see that, you're like, got away with one. <laughs> and, you know, to be, you see that a lot, especially with those within about 10 yards mm-hmm. where the, the defender gets there early and they don't make that. I mean, the same thing happened in the Pac-12 game the night before on, like, uh, uh, Utah to fourth down. You know, run a slant, defender gets there early, incomplete pass. Utah wasn't happy about it, but there no, was no coach was no mad ball. Yeah. walking oh. off the field. Yeah, you know, berating the refs, but... That stuff happens, but when it's, that's not, you know, it's one thing if that's an isolated call. But like we're saying, it wasn't an isolated bad call. It was a, you know, a connected pattern of bad calls in a game where obviously Bowlesby had a team who we wanted to root for because as a conference, you want to have a team get in the college football playoff. And that's the goal. And when the Big 12's been left out so many years, they wanted everything that could go right to get them in. Can we talk big picture real quick about how terrible the idea is of like every conference just wanting to get a team in the CFP and how bad that is for college football? Because I have a lot of opinions on that. Go for it. So, all right, <laughs> here we go. So we <laughs> well, hear James's soapbox. Yeah, <laughs> this is my soapbox. Uh, we hear college football writers and uh, analysts talk about how like, well, you know, like the Pac-12 sucks this year. There's not a single dominant team, and right. yet year in and year out, we watch the Pac-12 and we state. This is great. Right. Who's gonna? No, we have no idea who's gonna win. Right. But yet they're a bad conference because no one. There's not a dominant team. And then we look at like the SEC. Alabama wins the conference every year except for right. last year. Um, when they when still make it, they, they still win it all. <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> a different soapbox though. Uh, not gonna get on that one. But uh, yeah, and like I think if you look at the Big Twelve this year, it's a prime example. A lot of people are like, you know, is the Big Twelve having a down year? We've got four teams. Uh, four teams who could win the conference, and you know, right. three of them really are not great teams. Yeah. Uh, but I think if we look at this like from the standpoint of is this good for college football, the Pac-12 and the Big 12 are very good for college football. Yeah. The Big 12 had semifinal games in back-to-back weeks for right. the conference championship. Right. Texas, yeah. Iowa State, winner goes in. Yep. West Virginia, Oklahoma, win and you're in. Yeah. Those are those are playoff games to go to the conference oh. championship. Right. That yeah. is far more and exciting both... than Alabama, Ole Miss. Right. Doesn't matter. Alabama won the conference in September. Like, well, and, and both those games, the Iowa State Texas game, the Oklahoma West, they were entertaining games. Well, Alabama well, LSU. One was more entertaining than the other, right, but right. we enjoyed it because <laughs> that's true. But like Texas consistently, and the Big Twelve consistently had good close games the whole year. Yeah. The yeah. biggest oh, game. Texas was like, very helpful. <laughs> in that one. When you look at it, the, the two biggest games in in the Big Twelve this year was Texas OU and OU West Virginia. Both incredible games. The biggest game in the SEC this year was Alabama LSU. That was a bad game. Fest. And it's historically never been close. <laughs> like, when they try to hype it up, when they try to hy- hype up the game, it's like, two th- they're like, 1996, Alabama wins. Fast forward, 2003, Al- it's not even like, oh, it was a nail-biter here. Was a na- they're never close games. And it's Unless always it's 3-0. Yeah. Right, and in and, and that case, it's still like 3-0 feels like you're down 30 to nothing. <laughs> yeah. 
And that's, you know, that's, I, I agree with that. Take that, okay, maybe the SEC has a lot of more teams that can contend for a, a national championship, but there's it's not a good conference. That it's doesn't not, make a good conference. No, that, like, the, I watch way more Pac-12 football than SEC football. Well, well we are after Pac-12 dark. after dark right. fans. Well, but, but that's the thing is Pac-12 football is on at 10 o'clock at night, yet I'd still rather watch that than Georgia-Missouri at 2.30, a primetime game, yeah. you know, on CBS. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I, think, I think competition is very good for the sport, and I think, you know, parity is good. And I don't care if we, you know, don't have a team in the playoffs. We had a great entertaining football. We did right. get a team in the playoffs. But, like, you know, it doesn't – I don't think that should matter. Like, the Pac-12, it hasn't gotten a team in the playoffs since, like, the first year. Like, who cares? Keep doing your thing. It's right. way more exciting for the rest of us. And we're looking at Utah and, you know, Utah is going to the South Championship and the Apple Cup is a semifinal. Like, right. that mm-hmm. is so much more exciting than – well, it's going to be Alabama and Georgia. Why? Because we said it was going to be Alabama. I mean, and Georgia Alabama, in Ge- like when Alabama and Georgia was finalized. Here are the teams who still had a chance to make the Pac-12 championship: Washington, Washington State, Arizona, Arizona State, Utah, and USC. Like that's <laughs> six, seven teams all had a chance. Yeah, I think Oregon still had a chance at that point. Yeah. Oregon State might not have been eliminated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and and Alabama and Georgia had been like this was like week three. They're like, yeah. oh, they both won. They're in the co- like it. It's insane, and the fact that SEC teams like never like what does Alabama and Georgia haven't played each won't play each other till like twenty something. We're in playing Georgia season. before Texas A and M. A and M's been in the conference for seven years, still hasn't played Georgia. It, you know, it's it's crazy how just you know, and I think some of that's just the downside of a fourteen team conference. Yeah. Is it's not a true conference. It's too big mm-hmm. because you're well, not. It's a league. They also it's a league. That's how that's of, how like the NBA works. Of nine you have two conferences, games. but like, look, the NBA, NFL, you play a bunch of teams from your conference, one or two from the other side, like the other a different conference, and then you meet for a championship. The SEC is a league. It's not a conference, right? And so, you know, and and that's that's how you can get the non pair I guess, parity. non parity Disparity. Disparity. Good word there. <laughs> it's a normal person word. <laughs> well, words are hard. <laughs> non parity that exists. Hey, winning, sorry. In the conference. <laughs> winning, winning is hard. That is As true. are words. <laughs> words and winning are hard. I think Coach Sherman would agree with both of us. <laughs> no, he's good at words. And did you every hear press conference, he comes in with, like, deplirious. And I'm like, that, you made that up. <laughs> <laughs> Mensa. He is a Mensa. All right, so let's get to a little bowl game preview. Um, it's going to be an interesting game. There is there is definitely yeah. a lot of thought of when when the, there was the debate over does OU make the playoff? Of okay, you playing the Sugar Bowl, but you're probably going to get killed by Georgia, versus playing Washington State or Utah in the Alamo Bowl and probably winning. Yeah. But I will say this: I saw on the Instagram page a couple days ago the the Texas jerseys with the Sugar Bowl logo. Yeah, it's a, it's a good, good look. Shoulder. It's a oh, good yeah. look. It's a good look. Um, it's good to be back. In a significant game, even if that is almost certain doom. Yeah. Um, so I'll I'll just go give a little recap, and then we can all kind of say different keys or predictions and that kind of stuff. But I think what you're looking at is Georgia's just a really solid top to bottom team. Good defense, good offense. Um, but it's it's a defense that Texas can score on. They gave up mm-hmm. um, 36 to LSU, 35 to Bama. Wait, they gave up 36 to LSU. 36 Ooh, to LSU. Oh that was gosh. their loss. They lost 36 I probably to could have held LSU to less than <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, they, they gave up also 27 to UMass. So they wait, had, wait UMass? Well, okay, it was like 67, 27. So I I don't oh, okay. I didn't watch the game. I don't know when the 27 points were you scored. Know, but the point UMass is UMass is only a few years away from winning the bottom 10. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. They're close. <laughs> Talk to Ryan McGee about that. Well, I mean they won they won the title like four years ago. Right. And oh, hey, they no. they're rebuilding. They're rebuilding. <laughs> <laughs> scored 27 against Georgia. That's not how you win the bottom 10 or lose the bottom 10. I don't know. Exactly. It's definitely a win. It's, it's, it's definitely a win. win. But anyways, it's 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 defense that's looked good in some games. They've held other than those games, it's every team other under like 17 points. But if you can kind of exploit the defense, there's a chance to score on them. On the offensive side, this is this is the scariest part for Texas. Jake Fromm, incredible. Yeah. You got Swift, who's just latest in the line of incredible Georgia running backs. Um, you know, and Fromm, kind of similar to Ellinger, not many mistakes, 27 touchdowns to five interceptions. Wow, those are almost the exact same stats. Yeah. Right, almost, yeah. I mean, Ellinger has a couple more on the ground. But as far as throwing, I mean, it's Ellinger is something like 28-4. to four. Or something like that. So the key is the key is 
defensively to force turnovers. LSU forced four turnovers in their win against LSU and and whatever when they beat Georgia thirty six to sixteen. So that's going to be the key. And this Georgia team has scored thirty plus in all games except for three. Two of those they lost. So it's going to come down to the defense. Um, but what do y'all see as keys to the game or maybe predictions? I mean, I think if you look at the way Texas has won games, it's been off turnovers. Right. Uh, if the defense can create turnovers and get red zone stops, that's the recipe for success. And the defense, um, I mean, the biggest problem against Oklahoma on Saturday. Right. No, okay, there were maybe, what, one turnover? Yeah. But then there was followed up by a safety right after yeah. that, so it didn't really matter. Yeah. You know, you look at October against Oklahoma, yeah, turnovers all over the place. Right. So I think the defense, the number one key is, is forcing turnovers. That Those two games that we lost back-to-back, no turnovers. No turnovers. You come back against Tech, there was something like three turnovers yeah. in that game. Yeah, and that's a win. Yeah. Should, no, it should have been a bigger win, but it's <laughs> still a win. Right. Uh, so that's, that is the most common theme from, uh, from, from every win right. and every loss is right. turnovers. Yeah. I mean, it might be a hot take, but I think Texas has a better chance of beating Georgia than OU. You think so? Well, Georgia's a more I'd, balanced team. I'd They're agree with balanced, that. But they have no Kyler Murray. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, like... <laughs> I think uh, I think OU's offense is better or had more threats. That's true. Uh, and compared to like, we can do our best to contain Georgia. Okay. But at the same time, like our offense can match them. So as if our defense can do better than their defense, we'll have a good chance of winning the game. Yeah, Jacob. I, the key to this game is mindset. Yeah. If, I agree. The way we win this is if it's a repeat of the 2013 Sugar Bowl, mm. and Georgia come in comes in here like Al- yep. Alabama. They're disappointed they didn't yep. make the playoff. Exactly. They don't have anything to play for. It's just the Sugar Bowl. Right. We come in here. It's a Sugar Bowl for us. We haven't been here in 10 years. Right. So we're excited. These seniors. Right. The, the players, this they is, remember two years ago not making a bowl, and now they're in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. So if we come out there and hit them in the mouth from the beginning, I yeah. think we have a good chance of winning this game. Yeah, I agree. And now I, I do, like, that's, that's kind of one of the, the – places I've given the Texas the edge and is kind of that mindset of, hey, we want to be here. Georgia doesn't. But, I, you know, I want to go back to what Andrew Beck said before the OU game of, you know, motivation's great in preparation, but it doesn't help you on second down. Um, and so that was uh, Beck, right? Who yeah, said that's that? what yeah. I just said. <laughs> 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 Half listening. There. Um, but, yeah, you know, and I, I think that's but that's going to be the key is if Texas can stay motivated and stay locked in this whole game. I think they have a good chance. All right, let's 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 get some, some bowl game predictions. Well, first, Aria Bastami, who's joining us later, says Texas by a million. Um, <laughs> what say the rest of y'all? Uh, not Texas by a million. <laughs> um, Two million. <laughs> Two million. I, think, uh, I mean, I think it's going to be a close game. That's my number one yeah. prediction because Texas is playing in it, so it's going to be a yeah. close game. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the for, sigh from Wade. <laughs> for, the, uh, for the sake of superstition, Yeah, I'm going to give Georgia the edge Okay, because I just don't trust this team to win games. Okay. I, I've i been burned too many times. Give uh, me a number. Oh, sheesh. <laughs> um, uh, mid-30s. Actual number. I want you, I'm, I'm holding every one of y'all to this. All right, fine. 36-34. Um, <laughs> Whoa, Ooh. really? That's a, <laughs> that'd be a fun score. <laughs> All right, Wade. Um, this, is, this is a safety in 36 I know. 30, I think. Uh, First of all, I'm going to well, say... That's the team that wins. <laughs> first of all, I'm going to say Texas wins. Knock on the wood, I have to. Um, by how much is a different story? I, I think it could be... I think it's going to be a last-second field goal. Um, oh, another, another earthquake? Another, another For earthquake. Sugar Bowl immortality? <laughs> <laughs> no Gus Johnson on the call. Uh, uh, who's uh, carrying the game? That's ESPN. Of course. Care. 90% of bowl games. But I mean, hire me. Like, great company. Respect. I respect <laughs> them, Fox, CBS, everybody. I'm going to go 45 nice. uh, <laughs> 42. Oh. 45 42. Whoa! Shootout. shootout in the Sugar Bowl. The Sugar Bowl shootout. Sugar Bowl. The headline. The headline in the Superdome. Itself. In the Superdome. <laughs> the Superdome. Superdome Sugar Bowl shootout. Presented Sam by Allen. State Farm. <laughs> Presented by State Farm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jacob, prediction? All right, so. I'll preface it with, in my bull pick em, I'm going to be picking Texas because you got to. <laughs> but on official record, I think Georgia pulls out a close one. They're, they're just the better all-around team. It's going to be close. I go Georgia 34-28. Yeah, I, I, I'm saying something. I think it's going to be a little lower scoring than you all think. I think 27-17 Georgia wins it. 
I think it's close. I think we see is similar to the Big 12 championship game, close for three quarters, and Georgia just being the better team, you know, yeah. kind of goes off in the fourth quarter. No. And <laughs> no. no. Well, we not will, so fast. We, <laughs> not so fast. Hot takes from Wade over here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see who's right, Wade. I certainly hope you're right. Um, let's real quick before y'all go, a little special teams minute. Um, this would be the special team special, but Thomas is boring, <laughs> so it's the special team's minute. Well, that's what I call it. <laughs> well, let, let, maybe maybe if Michael Dixon listens, we'll let him pick it. That's a good idea. Michael Dixon, that's... Because the special team's minute is focused on none other than Michael Dixon, who, by the way, if y'all have not voted for the Pro Bowl, make sure you go out and vote for the, the Pro Bowl. Um, this segment sponsored by the Dixon for MVP Foundation, <laughs> where we're just trying to get... A simple guy from Australia, the NFL MVP. But it all starts with an MVP to remember starts with a pro. (laughs) 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 Anyways, though, looking at Michael Dixon's stats, leads the league 48.7 yards per punt. Leads the league in net 44.2 yards. He He leads that stat by a lot, too. Right, by like two yards. Oh, my gosh. Um, He has 20 punts inside the 20 and only two touchbacks. He's a rookie. I think that yeah. only can two we give him rookie of the point year too? is, is <laughs> a big one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one of the, one of the best probably rookie seasons for any special teams player in a long time because that is a big transition from okay, yeah, you're you're good at Texas, but if you mess up, it's not a huge. When you're playing for a franchise, NFL fans do not take it easy on special teams guys when they mess up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're saying that NFL fans are worse than Texas <laughs> fans. For okay, for I want to remind you how stuff. bad Texas look, fans look, are. Here, for well, a second. Texas also, fans also Texas not special send death teams when a kicker like misses oh, NFL teams send death threats when you mess up as a special teams person. That is a good point. What was his name? RIP uh, Dan Bailey. Blair Well, uh, Blair Walsh, Blair yeah, Walsh. The, the Vikings guy. Yeah, and so That's a good point. NFL fans are ruthless when it comes to special teams players. And so Michael Dixon comes out as a rookie has killed it. So I think I think he deserves to be Pro Bowl, Rookie of the Year, and NFL MVP. That's Throw in a say. special teams player of the he's, year for I uh... mean, he's, he averages a first down every <laughs> carry. Um, I don't think any other running back or Patrick Mahomes can't say that. He doesn't average a first down a carry. I think he averaged like a sack a carry or something like that. Just don't say anything bad about Patrick Mahomes. Um, how, many intercept- Mahomes Patrick Mahomes how, many, how many interceptions has Patrick Mahomes thrown? A lot. More than one. And Michael Dixon? Less than one. But greater than negative one. Uh, zero. <laughs> if you can do the math, our <laughs> range is zero. A zero to one. <laughs> zero to one, and the answer is zero. So all I'm saying, the stats. How do you throw a negative interception? Well, that's why I said greater than. Uh, they review the it and have it stand, but don't give you the interception like in the Big 12 game. Oh. Ooh. Good that's, that's a negative interception. That's, that's our math man, Jacob Greenlee. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, make sure vote for Michael Dixon in the Pro Bowl. Um, and guys, thanks for joining us. Fun to finally get all all the roommates on and talk some Texas football. So thanks. Uh, it's always good to be on. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right, we now welcome on. Um, we have some special guests. We have legendary UT rapper Stop. Aria Bastami and <laughs> legendary UT legend. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I was really wondering what what my UT legend. Yeah, legendary. Huh? All right, wow. so. Um, this is a new segment, and uh, it'll be probably debuting more in the spring, but we're going to start it now called Shooting the Bull, Let's shoot where the bull, baby. we just kind of have some topics and we debate. Yep. As Nick Kuholtz joins and says, Mapes Daddy, that's you. Mapes <laughs> Daddy. Thumbs up. Um, all right, so we're going to start off talking a little bit of NFL. Yeah, yeah. Start off with your Oakland Raiders. <laughs> I'm so sorry for the, for the sound. <laughs> I, had to do it. I had to do it. Everyone just yanked out their headphones. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyways, it's been an interesting season. It really has. Huh. Get a win yesterday. Jeez. GM's gone. Yep. You have like 12,000 first round draft picks in the yep. future. Mm-hmm. How are you feeling about <laughs> the future of the franchise? I feel very weird. Okay, so let me explain. <laughs> As much as I love John Gruden as an ESPN (laughs) um, By the way, ESPN? Nice. We're we're, we're fans of ESPN over here. Are you hiring? (laughs) Are you you guys hiring by any chance? No, as much as I love John Gruden as an ESPN personality, to see what he has literally done to this team, (laughs) to see how well the Chicago Bears are playing, to see Amari Cooper, yes, it might be inconsistent, has a game where he he goes ridiculous, and a game where he doesn't, but... 
to see Amari Cooper go beast mode. Right. Mm-hmm. And, oh, I don't know, are, where, where, where are those teams? Not in Oakland. Okay, <laughs> so to see him do what he's done to this team in just a short matter of time, and we're contractually obligated to this man for, <laughs> Ten more, for, nine for, more years. for about a decade, really. <laughs> um, it's a little worrying. Yeah, eight-year-olds will be graduating from high school yeah. when, uh, because, when his contract's up. Whoa. It's a little worrying, and, and the reason why I say that is because you see how close this team was right. mm-hmm. with prior to Derek Carr's injury against the Colts. And right. being, I just wish Del Rio had pulled him because I really feel like we could have done something that year. But you see how close this team was, and then obviously the Marshawn Lynch injury doesn't yep. help, but... I mean, I don't know how to feel. I, all I can feel is, to everybody um, in Pittsburgh, <laughs> suck it. That's all I can I, I feel good. I feel good right now, and I'm going to feel terrible when we have to play the Chiefs. Again. Yeah. So. Mapes, what's your unbiased opinion it's, on it's the Raiders? Raiders? Well, it's not too different. It's, uh, it's really odd to uh, you know start a rebuild when all your good players are like 26. Right. Uh, or right you're not trading away like 35-year-olds. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not like, oh, well, we had our shot. We made a couple runs. It's like, no, all these guys are still young. Uh, so that, that's weird. And then also firing the guy who drafted all the good players you decided to <laughs> trade. That's also, eh, I'm not sure about that one, but, uh, yeah, it, it really is. I mean, there's really nothing to say. You have Cleo Mack on Sunday night football dominating, like just winning a game against yep. the best team in the yep. NFC. Oh. And then and then in the afternoon you had Amari Cooper, like what, three touchdowns, 200 yards. Yeah. Those were f- fluky, like the last one especially. Right. Where it right. was, it's like, but oh. I mean, Khalil's been playing like a beast all season. Oh yeah, like, no, we Khalil, expected him no all, fluke. You know, to do. Even Omari, not not really a fluke. Yeah. He he's he's, he's, a good he's that good. He he would do stuff like like you said, like highs and lows. Like I, that's why I hated him in fantasy when he was on <laughs> Oakland's because like he would have you like can't, 180 can't yards him. or yeah. he would have 19. And of course, yards. the week when he goes for 180, you sit him. Yeah, because the week before it was like 30, you know, two yeah, receptions, two, 30 yards. Yeah. Just want to say that I got to the fantasy football semifinals because I took the risk. And I started Amari Cooper. Manuel, I'm so sorry uh, that I beat you. But, uh, sorry, Amari Manuel. Cooper, thank you so much. That's, that's <laughs> you want to tell us more about your fantasy team? Um, you know, my fantasy team. Yeah, we don't care. Okay, so let's move on to another team going downhill. Yep. Uh-huh. My uh, Washington Redskins. The Skins! Oh, wow. Yeah, so little little embrace debate. Are they cursed? <laughs> yes. I mean, RG3... Yeah. Kills his leg. Yep. This, I mean, last year, chance to make the playoffs. Whole team gets injured. This year, line goes down. Alex Smith j- loses his leg. Thoughts and prayers. Mm-hmm. Colt McCoy breaks his leg. Uh, that that well, that one really hurt. Like yeah, that one. That like one I hurt. felt yeah, that. Like in that. fly fly the horns at half mast after that. As, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Horns are like yeah. As as a Redskin <laughs> and a Longhorn man. Horns are Yeah. Horns not all the way up. Yeah. That one. That one dug deep. Yeah. And then I mean the half the deep like. And then to have to play Mark Sanchez, just, <laughs> just incredibly they, bad. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, are they cursed? And yeah. if so, what needs to like? Is it a name change? I, you know, it's the Gruden curse. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, the, the, both the two, Gruden two brothers. Here, it's, it's the Gruden brothers. Um, so no. it's just it's simple as firing Gruden. No, no. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, 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 I actually, I think I actually think Gruden's a great coach. Jack, I I like awesome. him. I like Jack. I, I like him. Yeah. And like he's he, had like he's fine. Yeah. He's had a couple years like la- this year they were a playoff team before the in- last year playoff team before the injury. Like he's done a good job. Obviously having Sean McVay there a couple years ago was also big when they won the NFC. Yeah. But he's, he's done a good job. I mean, I th- obviously the problem is Dan Snyder. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And unfortunately he's the one guy you can't fire. So yeah. unless somebody yeah. wants to scrounge up five billion dollars. Buy the Redskins. Yeah, Start a GoFundMe. Buy the can, Redskins from You can Dan hope Snyder. he gets uh, Donald Sterling. Uh, you can just hope. <laughs> hope there's a tape out there. No. Hey, Jerry oh, Jones yeah. is going to buy the Redskins. Be the first yeah. dual owner in <laughs> the NFL. Well, we just got a minor league team now. Wow. That's a good deal. All right, so going to the name, though, like if they – what are what are some plausible name changes? Obviously, probably not going to happen with Dan Snyder, but – I really feel like Snyder would be the biggest one. I mean, that that's the guy. It's almost to an extent, like, look at it synonymously to the Cowboys, right? Right. Because the Cowboys are this team that you're expecting them. They're every Everybody in Dallas still says, you know, it's America's team. Right? <laughs> yeah, whatever. Honestly, I'm just going to, quick side note, yeah. shooting the bull. 
<laughs> I think the Patriots should be America's team because it's the Patriots. Right. It just historically makes sense. Yeah. But whatever. and they're really good. Yeah, and they're really, <laughs> really good. And, but they've okay, won, whatever. They've won a um, Super Bowl in our lifetime. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, but okay, so n- neither here nor there on the Patriots. So back right. to the back to the skins. I I think. The biggest thing is Snyder because you look at it, and especially with Dallas, you look at them. They're a team that should be dominating, right? And they've got the the media contracts, they've got the player contracts, top four sports brands, they've got according to, to yeah, uh, exactly UT professor Stephen yeah. Willett. <laughs> <laughs> and so they've got all of this going behind them, right. and Jerry's just making the wrong calls. And I feel like Snyder, to an extent, is doing the exact same thing. Yeah, Snyder is like a poor man's... And he is a poor version of <laughs> Jerry, Jerry Jones. Jones. Where it's you like, know, which is funny, because he's still really rich. Yeah, oh, like, yeah, he's yeah. still richer than I'll ever dream of yeah. him. <laughs> but yeah, I I just think it's, you know... It's really hard. Win- Thomas, winning is hard. And uh, <laughs> we, we brought that up earlier on the show. Winning is hard and words are hard. Yeah. <laughs> Both. I had some inc- problem with words. Incredibly true. Hilton Head, South Carolina. Hilton folks. Head, South Carolina. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's it's really hard to win. And when you don't have good ownership, it makes it even harder because then he's less likely to hire good front office right. who is less likely to hire good coaches. Yep. It, it's just you're. Having good owner is like a great advantage to have oh, in sports. Yeah. Just Very a true. guy willing to spend money and right. willing to get out of the way and yeah. like make smart hires. Like, yep. like I don't even know who the Spurs owner is. Like the RC owner is Buford. San. Oh, he's the owner. I thought he was just the GM. I thought he was the second hand, like right hand man to Pop. I'm gonna say allegedly. Shout out to the Spurs. Yeah, but the fact we don't right, we're know, talking Spurs a little bit. We don't know. Stay the, tuned. We don't know who owns you don't the want Spurs. To miss it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we don't know who owns the Spurs, but we know like all the bad NBA right. owners. Right, that that tells you something. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, so I mean, I, like, who owns like who like the Patriots? Like, I... uh, Vladimir Putin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> he has his one of the rings. Uh, but yeah, I just think. I mean, seriously, I'm not sure if it's a curse or it might be a curse. It's just the curse of Dan Snyder. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's yeah. not some in, in, ancient Indian <laughs> curse. It's probably just Dan Snyder. <laughs> All right, so moving on to teams that have found a way to win because it's it's tough. The Houston Texans, my team. Well, okay, oh. so we're getting hard. there. We're getting oh. so, there. So Rams lose yep. to the Bears. Yep. Pats yes. lose to the Bears. To the Dolphins. Texans lose. To the Colts. Yep. Yeah. Um, now, meanwhile, Chiefs, Saints, Chargers kind of escape upsets. But of these guys, like who who are y'all liking to win it all? Who's who's the favorite at this point? If I'm being honest, please be honest. Don't I, lie I, please. to us. Yeah, if I <laughs> this is a show for honesty. Yeah, um, <laughs> I honestly have a lot of faith in the Houston Texans. I oh. really do. I think <laughs> don't like that. I, well, <laughs> let me exp- hold on. Let me explain. Let me explain. Please do. I think DeAndre Hopkins, as great of a wide receiver as he is. And he's had moments of him being like, yeah, I've asserted my dominance in the right. league. I'm one of the best wide receivers. I think if he can do that in the playoffs, yeah, his name goes to that astronomical level, no pun intended with it being Houston. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, like, he goes to that next right. level. Elite. Of the elite of the elite. Yeah. Because, like, the OBJs or the, the Julio Jones, the Antonio Browns. Because he's, as Yeah, he's like now, the Now, question, next guy you bring up OBJ. Mm-hmm. Do we know that he's that good? Yes, I, I think <laughs> yes. I think I think OBJ is that good. Yeah, he, there's are his a, hydration problems hindering his performance? I mean, they're not helping. Didn't OBJ say? It? Yeah, he hates water. Exactly. That's why he has OBJ, to go get IVs. Bro, I know you're never gonna watch this. <laughs> Maybe you someone, will. someone tag OBJ. Maybe. Someone in the tag comments. Odell Beckham. Cool. Once I see you joining, tag uh, tag Odell. Tag Odell and tell him to drink water. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Cheers to Odell Beckham Jr. Hey, Even, you're not get, get in the get in the Twitter camera. Cheers to Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> Drink some water. Hey, careful! It's, it's sli- it gives you a little sloshy feel in your stomach. Yeah, even if you don't like the taste or anything, like there's there's pods and stuff. You can put in a little, you know. It's water <laughs> flavor. Yeah, flavor your water. You need it, but no. I mean, drinks now. Little little right? embrace debate. Are temperatures of water their flavor? There's cold water, there's warm water, there's ice cold water. Yeah, I will say this. I, warm water tastes a little different. It does. It does. And ice cold water is different than cool water, different than lukewarm water. Yeah, yeah. room temp. I mess with different cool flavors. water. I think cool, cool water is the water best guy. water. Ice water destroys your digestive system. Does it really? It's warm water, it does. Yeah. It's not good for you. 
Don't don't. The it's more you know. Good for, yeah, the, the more, more you know. <laughs> Odell. The more you know. Odell. <laughs> uh, drink water and cool water. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, ice water is horrible for you, so I don't I don't really mess with that. But uh, cool water. Is water wet. Cool. Nick Cool says. Oh it, boy, that's a debate. Is Come on the show wet? next semester, yeah. Cool, and we'll talk. Well, about cool. Call in cool. from call in from, from <laughs> Spain. <laughs> from Barcelona. Uh, Barcelona. Uh, um, <laughs> you know how many minutes that would cost. Like, Nick, we're going to have you on real quick. Just <laughs> answer the question. <laughs> yes. Wrong. All right. That was Nick Kuholtz talking water. <laughs> yeah. um, okay. You know, back to the main point. DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> oh, how, yeah. how do we get oh, here? Yeah. Um, but no, to, to, my, to my point, I think he's set to have a great okay. um, set of games in the playoff. I, you know, if the Texans obviously get to right. the playoffs, which I do think they will. Um, I think he's going to be destined to have a great couple of games in the playoffs, which is going to take him to that next level. Deshaun Watson, I think, is more than capable, even after but coming. Do they have what it takes to beat the Chiefs, beat the Patriots, beat the Steelers? I, I think they have. Okay, I think the Steelers, <laughs> easy money. I, I think I think they, they have what it takes to beat the Chiefs. It's the Patriots to me. Hold, let me. Hold. Okay. Let me explain. Okay. okay. No, no, I'm let interested. Me I'm interested. <laughs> Okay, everyone's so caught up with Mahomes doing no looks. Mahomes looking like this. Mahomes well, uh, looking he, like he's, that. He's been really good. You take. He's been really good. You take. <laughs> you really you get a couple hits of JJ Watt in you, and then you're gonna understand what's going on. Look, I genuinely believe that the Houston Texans, because it's always gonna be. I don't think they're a dark horse, but I think they're good enough to be right under those tier one players to where they could compete with them. And to me, that's always the most dangerous team Mm. because the team with the most hype behind them can easily fall under that pressure. Where if if you're a team like the Texans, you have nothing to lose and J.J. Watt's screaming at your face, (laughs) you've got a good shot to win these games. And that to me... Though there's no statistical backing right. and it's a lot more anecdotal, right. I do think that there's some merit behind it. I think the, the Texans could really do it. Hmm. They could pull it off. Mapes, who are you liking? Okay, so uh, can I just talk as a Texans fan? Yes, please There's do. not please a snowball's do. chance <laughs> in heck. Oh, no. That, oh, no. <laughs> that, that, they're, that they're going into any uh, environment, any road environment and winning a playoff game because yeah. I'm pretty sure they've never done it in their franchise history. <laughs> So unless they're catching, you know, the the Bengals at home, the chances are they're not winning the playoff game. Just okay. that's Fair how you, that's how you can kind of run the math in your head. Yeah. So I I don't really think, and I think their nine game winning streak was uh, a little fluky. Nine uh, games is fluky in the NFL. How? Well, when you list them out about like, well, uh, Frank Wright uh, could have had a tie, but Frank instead just went for Architect? fourth down to. <laughs> <laughs> to give him a uh, to give him an easy field goal, right? Yeah, Jason Garrett do basically the same thing. You had uh, missed field goals uh, in Denver for a kicker that hadn't missed before that game. Uh, you have Thomas Fitch's uh, Washington uh, Kurt Redskins, Curse Skins, the Curse, the Skins. <laughs> yeah, so the only teams they blew out were like the Jags and the right. Dolphins and. Uh, there's another then, team somewhere in there. If, if wanna, oh, the if, Titans. That yeah. If you want to soft ass, put it put in. You know, let's put it in perspective here. Dolphins beat the Patriots. Texans beat the Dolphins. Therefore, yeah. Texans are better than the Patriots. Yes. Thank you. Good night. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> whoa. But I'm kidding. Okay. That's, a, that's a whoa. There. That's a that's a whoa, and that's a stretch. That's a hot take. I'm not willing yeah, to go with. Yeah. Also, the Texans lost to the Patriots in Week One. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I think the the team to team to watch is uh <laughs> the San or the Los Angeles Chargers. Yeah. I think that they're uh peaking at the right time. Not not just that, but I think that if they can get Melvin Gordon healthy, yeah. they uh they've, they've Keenan won Allen. the last what two, three weeks without Gordon. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, last two weeks. Keenan Allen is a man. Well and, and uh, supposedly yeah. Gordon and Eckler are supposed to be out against the Oh, because Eckler got that head injury. That's yeah. right. Yeah. So we'll We'll see about that, but I, I think if they can get healthy, if they can get mm-hmm. right, they're going to catch probably the Texans in round one. I, I don't really. Ice town, how to die. <laughs> yeah. And now, now this, question, this question has to be asked. Yeah. Cowboys. No. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> what give chance do they have? Give, give them some respect. Is this, is this another NFC East team makes playoffs, loses in the first round, except for the Eagles who do it once every 10 years? <laughs> I'm going to say this. I'm, I, 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 no grain of my body is a Cowboys fan, but I think it'd be good for football if the Cowboys could do it. Huh. 
if they could advance. I think it, I know you as as a skins fan, that hum was like, shut your dirty mouth, <laughs> are you? No. But, no. but <laughs> and as a Texas fan, okay, so that, I'm not in a very hospitable room for what I'm saying, but um, it would be good for football if they did. Because, mm. like I said, they draw. Think about it revenue-wise. They draw a lot of ratings. Yeah. Quote, unquote, yeah. still America's team. You've got this young running back who's, like, you know, energizes a lot of people. And you've got Dak that if you can just, just be you make a, holds happy. Just <laughs> be, like, dude, just sling that ball. Because if if Dak has the confidence to sling the ball to Cooper. Wait, 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 question. Do you have Cowboys players on your fantasy team? This... I do have. Yeah, nobody I, cares. I have Amari. Um. Co- I just have Amari Cooper. Hold on. Okay, hold on. He can throw it to Beasley and sauce it up. Whatever. He can throw it to whoever he wants. But I'm saying, <laughs> if Dak, I just all I think is about my fantasy team. You know, look, if, if Dak just has the confidence to sling the football. I think that's what they need to do yeah. because now he has a wide receiver that can go and make plays for him. He doesn't need to have a wide receiver to where he throws to get them open. Right. He has a wide receiver that can get open. And also their defense really stepped up the last uh, for sure. last few weeks, last yeah. four or five weeks. But uh, I, I, def- I do agree with what you're saying about it's it's – they have a little bit of like the Lakers, Yankees kind of stuff, right. where like big games, like big big feel, brand, big big yeah. games feel bigger when they're in right. it. Yeah, when I it's agree. not like Jags and like whatever Texans, yeah. Jags, like Titans Jag, whatever. Jags Texans isn't a, a big game fight. <laughs> it could be in the AFC Championship game. It would it would be like they would show reruns of Mike and Molly instead. Uh, <laughs> so the yeah. the Cowboys definitely have that, but I just can't see them going on the road and mm-hmm. beating because I don't think. In this win streak, I mean, they beat the Saints at home. They beat the Redskins at home. Right. They beat the Eagles at home. Mm-hmm. You know, they're going to get one home game. They're going to play one, the you know, maybe the Seahawks, someone like that. But then right. can they go on the road and beat the Bears, the, the Saints, the uh, Rams? I, I just don't see yeah. it. Yeah, That's the tough. thing. That's I think tough. the NFC, the top of the NFC is much more, maybe not better, but much more reliable. Yeah than the AFC because I can still I see the Chiefs kind of you know young quarterback the Chiefs haven't won a home playoff game in like 30 years right. the, there's some recipe to go wrong there yeah. I just don't and then the Texans are the third seed and there's it's always a recipe to go wrong so I, I just yeah. don't see a you know yeah, I, I have that. I have I have Saints Patriots playing in the Super Bowl mm. yeah I think the experience of Drew Brees just overwhelms the youth like the Rams are really good and there's talent across the board but they're young. Yeah. And the experience of Drew Brees and this team is just playing really – I mean, they have so many offensive weapons. Yeah, dual running backs, yeah. dude. Taysom yeah. Hill. Can and, then, and, I, I think, and, and then the, a Tom Brady, Drew Brees Super Bowl, I think at least one of them retires afterwards. Yeah. At least. It, it's possible it. that they both go into it and say this is our, both our last game. Wow, that would be and amazing. And talk about, talk about how legendary that would be. Yeah. Two legends, uh, like, retiring. I, like, they – Dual really press conference. Would, <laughs> I'd really hope it would be a shootout. Like, just – Oh, wait, of course it would be. Oh, both throw for like four hundred. I mean, like a Kobe oh, Knight last game. Drew, Tom, retire, man! Yeah. Like, do it, do it, do it. Get <laughs> 38, to the Super Bowl, 38 to forty three. Like, oh, oh man, oh that, oh some Big Twelve football in the yeah. Super Bowl, man. <laughs> let's do it. All right, let's move on. A little NBA talk, please. So let's talk. Who, you got, you got, you got Spurs, Jazz, Rockets sitting fourth, third, second to last, respectively, in the West. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and thirty games in, still early, but. Which of these are the biggest surprise? And out of these three teams, if one of the like who who's most likely to make the playoffs? Rockets. Rockets. All right. So who's the biggest uh, Rockets for both? <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Rockets I mean, I think the, I think. Yeah, I'll go with Houston, and then I'll go with the Rockets. Uh, <laughs> I, I I just think that uh, obviously you know they had sixty something wins right. last year. Right. That like you don't go. Eh. Yeah, they had sixty something wins, but I could see them struggling yeah. out the gate. Like, yeah. yeah, they're bringing back. Yeah, that's true. I mean, the Jazz, while they, you know, had some little postseason momentum, there's still a lot of young. Yeah, and I, I youth just on don't. The team. I, it's just hard to for me. I even last year, I was like, really, like it's just going to be Donovan Mitchell and Joe Ingles on offense. Like that's that's going to be Joe Ingles can ball, man. He broke my heart last year. I mean, but when you when you have OKC. to depend on Eagles, <laughs> that's when it, that's yeah, yeah. Oh, playoff. Sure. But I I think I think the the Rockets also are the best chance to dig yeah. themselves out of yeah. it because of the sixty something wins they and had the last year. Any any words of encouragement for my Spurs? What's what's the shot? You have Demar. 
I like Lonnie DeMar. Walker's coming and back. Pop. And yeah. you have Pop, you have DeMar, and also, let's never forget what DeMar said, okay? Because when this contract runs up, someone asked this man, DeMar, come to L.A., and he literally responded, hell no. Nah. So <laughs> just remember that. DeMar DeRozan is not going anywhere. I think, you know, he's an extremely talented guy. You guys build pieces around right. DeMar with a great coach in right. Popovich, which I will say – Judging by the game last night between the Heat and the Lakers when LeBron, I'm sure you guys caught it when he was like, it was either here or the Garden when yeah. he was talking about that. <laughs> Very interesting that he didn't have San Antonio up there because the biggest thing, that's when you knew in that moment that LeBron was strictly moving for a business decision right. in a bigger right. market. Because this, for, the move to the Spurs was, hey, get a ring, work with a guy, respect with Pop. Finally have the a great Knicks. coach. Right. Finally have a great coach. The Knicks. He didn't Spolster. even say the, the Garden or Staples Spolster. Center. I mean, that's Spolster. and that's what he talked about in the post. He was like, you know, to end this at Staples Center. That's what it's about for him at this point mm-hmm. is Staples Center, Madison Square Garden, big places. I wonder big how much of that markets. is what we talked about with the Cowboys of like, right? It's also like the you know, yeah, going with, say he with makes, the Showtime. Say, say he makes the finals and then the, all the like NBA classics, hardwood classics games. It's it's not we're here at the Q in right. Cleveland. It's, right, AT and T Center. You know, yeah, San Antonio. Yeah, it's like place, they, can the the <laughs> they can do the celebrity cam. They can do the celebrity cam, and it's not just Selena Gomez. <laughs> yeah, it's Selena Gomez and whoever, <laughs> and, and the owner some... of the H- of H E B. Hey man, H E B, respect it. It was there's some like dude singer who's from San Antonio. Oh, know. the little kid? No, no, oh. no, 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 no. I don't know. Little mariachi kid. Well, one of those two. I mean, he not, is not from a lot San Antonio. Of... Go Spurs, go. <laughs> <laughs> go Spurs, go Spurs, baby. Small market. That's. That's that's who we are. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's what we absolutely. do. Absolutely, but that's also why we didn't get Lamar. Le- Le- Lamar. LeBron. Yeah, he. Yeah. Lamar. <laughs> Lamar. Lamar Jackson. Why not San Antonio? Yeah, come on. I had the Lamar. AFA. Gus Aldridge. You guys <laughs> got him. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so now let's let's move to because you have teams like the Rockets, Spur, like perennial teams that normally are in playoff spots. Sure. It means you have teams who wouldn't normally be in there who are now in playoff spots. Let's do some buy sell. We'll start with teams who are. Kind of farther out, and we'll move to teams who are at the top. Okay. So start with the Mavs. Oh, I'm buying the Mavs. Yeah, I'm buying so hard on the Mavs, and I'll, I'll tell you why I'm buying on the Mavs right now. Why? JJ when Barea? I saw when I saw JJ Barea. When I saw, <laughs> hey, hold on, JJ Barea is cold. I don't want to uh, have he's any pretty disrespect. Good. I mean, shut down he, LeBron. I mean, <laughs> he shut down LeBron and took an elbow to the face by Andrew Bynum when they swept the Lakers. Oh, I'll yeah. never forget it because oh, he got was... up and scored a layup. JJ Barea, much respect to you. But I'll tell you why I'm buying on the Mavericks. When Luka hit a three in his 11-0 run by himself in the fourth quarter and did the Dirk tribute, because this is a, Dirk is the weirdest person in the NBA with his three. Not this. Oh no, that's how the European. That's how Germans do it. Yeah, that's how have the Germans. Se- have, yeah. I, I never even knew that. Oh, have you seen? It? Yeah, have you seen Inglorious Bastards? They, I have. They talk about it. That's in really? the yeah in the bar. That's how they figure out that they're Americans. Okay. Because he went like that <laughs> instead like of that. Okay. That. Well, respect to Germany for doing this. When Mine's I saw Mine's 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 <laughs> when I something. saw when I saw Luca do this <laughs> with that little Dirk action, I was like, I'm buying on the maps. They're a great team. People still sleep on Wesley Matthews. If he never had that ACL injury with the mm, Trailblazers, yeah. that guy would have, honest to God, been a to- top ten player. Uh, in my opinion, right now, um, in the NBA, I can see him being like Clay Matthews or Clay Clay Matthews, uh, Clay uh, <laughs> Clay Thompson. Yeah, I can yeah, see him. He, he, yeah. he literally could have been like yeah. a like a Clay Thompson, um, and you know, a great defender just yeah. like Clay is. And then you know, you still got DeAndre Jordan. I don't know right. what they're gonna do with him after this contract. Like, Cuban was a little weird on that, but it kind of seems like there was method to the madness because he invested twenty four mil one year contract yeah. on Jordan, but it. Kind of looks like it's going to pay off because they're going to be a playoff right, team. Right, right. Um, but I'm buying on the maps. All right, Mapes, 100%. buy, sell. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely think that they can be like the eighth seed, seventh seed, yeah. something like that. And uh, that I mean, I don't know how much it's actually worth of like getting Luca some uh, playoff reps if it's just going to be like against yeah. the Warriors. But I mean, it can't hurt. Or the Thunder. So. Okay, yeah, so I, I, right now. I was, I was trying to I was trying to think of like who would be the two seed. I guess it would be OKC, okay, maybe the Nuggets. Uh, yeah, the well, I, we'll get we, there. We'll okay, get there. Okay, yeah. As you can tell, the way I said Nuggets, you might know which way I'm leaning. <laughs> but uh, I, I definitely think the Mavs, they're, they're, they're for real as in like a for real playoff team. Okay. Yeah, I, I buy them making the playoffs. I sell them doing anything else. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, and that's, I'm a big like a, a playoff experience wins championships. Yeah. They're not making it out of the first round, but I think they'll make the playoffs yeah. and 
they're a team. have an exciting series. Right, they're a team to be on the lookout for yeah, in the future. Yeah, game three in Dallas will be lit. Oh. <laughs> All right, moving on, Lakers. I got. I mean, bye. How do you how bye. do you sell a team with LeBron on it? Like for me at least. Hey, what? With their seventeen and ten team, they right. they pull themselves out of the trenches because right. it's a LeBron James on a team and. Um, but are they a championship contender? No, I don't yeah. think they're a championship yeah. contender yet. They still need one more piece. Yeah, they're they're Western Conference Finals. I I can see you them making. So? I, I see make it them to the finals? possibly I, struggling West, in the semis. West Finals. They they might struggle in the semis, but they'll pull through, go to the finals, and and lose in five. That's what I yeah. See I, for I I mean like I could see them. Oh, I, I could see him hanging with the with uh, OKC and like because yeah. that would be the hypothetical two right, three right yeah I, I think it it'll just be interesting to see LeBron like because obviously in the past when he hasn't had much around him he's had the East to go through yeah mm-hmm. now having to go through the re- the West although it doesn't feel like the West is quite it's as not, tough it's this not year. as deep and so of course the year he goes to the West is not well we'll see what happens if the yeah. Rockets or Spurs make <laughs> a charge but like yeah. Yeah, I mean, OKC in the first round versus, you know, in the past where it's like Warriors and then Spurs and the Rock, you know, whoever, you know. Yeah. But it, it, it'll be interesting to see if he can actually pull something out by himself. I also, I also think it's it's interesting how he has, uh, without, like, the second star, everyone's like, oh, I don't have a second star. I, Kuzma? He, Question mark? Yeah, well, yeah, hey, Lonzo? Kuz, right there. But also, he, he's <laughs> definitely taken on more of the scoring uh, yeah. load. You see him go for 40, 30-something every yeah. night. I think that's uh, you know just a real change in his game. How he would normally be a little more passive in Cleveland and just pull out enough to win. Yeah. This one he's just putting it on, folks. Which is so unprecedented because it's in the you know swan song years of right. his career. So yeah. for him to be doing this, yeah. and just say, "No, nah, I'll flip the switch, flip, flip." Um, <laughs> it's just, I hate myself yeah, yeah. for that. <laughs> but y'all want Kobe? Here's Kobe. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's crazy. But also, I will say this on the Lakers, and this is where I would buy them as a right. playoff team. Um, to go that that deep of a run in the playoffs and get to the Western Conference yeah. Finals, if they can get consistency from Kuzma and Ingram specifically, yeah. it's a ball game. I really do, I, and I think at that point that's where they could really compete with the Warriors. I don't think they'd beat the Warriors, but they could compete with them because yeah. if you get like Brandon Ingram having thirty two point nights or Kyle Kuzma having twenty seven and five and six point you know, overall games, and he's playing really well. And then, obviously, Lonzo, he's a stat filler, so that's right. really what he's known for right now in his professional career. Um, but if you can get Kuzma and Ingram specifically, because those are the two guys that are super, and uh, I don't mean this as a hot take, <laughs> but super, super, right now, watered-down, cheaper versions of Durant. They're right. lengthy, they're shooters, they drive, they can uh Handle the ball well. Right. So you get two Durants on your team, watered down Durant. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> watered down two Durants half Durants. on your team. And uh, LeBron, I think you've got a good formula for success. I, I, I have a you're, – you're a Lakers fan, yeah. folks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how would you rank the four young guys as, mm. like – Guys, I don't know. I don't know how you want to take it, but I was thinking like, God, right now, guys who like would be on the floor on crunch time. Who would you rather have? One to four: Kuzma, Ball, Ingram, Hart. I really like. So this is the thing that I really love. Josh Hart because of his experience, obviously his collegiate experience yeah, being right, at Villanova. Right. I really love him. So I think he would be a guy that I definitely want to have. Are you saying one through four in yeah. order? Yeah, one through four. Oh, in order. In order? Okay. Because I first, think that's the interesting part. Yeah. First, Kuzma for yeah. me. Okay. Uh, just because of scoring ability. Yeah. Then Hart because okay. of experience. Okay. Um, Ingram because of the ability to or the potential. The upside. That he has, right. The upside. Right. So Ingram, um, and then Ball because I I do I really do like Lonzo's game, yeah. but. I get it. You have LeBron on your team, but you've gonna ha- he's gonna have to find some sort of aggressiveness because yeah, when Magic said, "I aggressive. want your name to be in the banners," you're gonna be the next guy. Right. Obviously, I don't think he predicted getting LeBron, but right, yeah, right. still gonna have to figure yeah, it and out. Yeah, and, and you don't aggressive. and you don't get your jersey in the rafter going like twelve points, nine assists. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> so he's gonna have to become more aggressive, yeah. even though he's a stat filler. 
he's gonna have to put some more stats towards okay. his point. That's, now, that, now, that, that's what I was I was yeah. I was maybe flipping Lonzo and Ingram just because I like the energy that the team has with Lonzo out there a little yeah. bit more. But uh, I I think the most interesting part is that it's not the two the number two picks. It's yeah, the two right. second rounder. Or right. I think Kuzma was like the thirtieth pick. But yeah. the two guys that are you know less heralded. Yeah. Now yeah. now do we see is LeBron gonna win a championship before he retires? Is he gonna get I, it now? If the over under, yeah, if the over under is like one and a half, I don't think yeah. he's gonna get two. Two, I'd bet against one. I think he can get one because you think like the Warriors, maybe you know their time's kind of up. Right. You can already see they're not as deep as a team as they used to. Durant. Yeah, Durant might leave, and then right. and then right. Iguodala and Livingston, two guys that you know were the sixth and seventh men. Right, they're starting to get older. They're mm-hmm. not as good. You know, they're just not as good anymore. And so, you know, maybe that you can see a little opening for them. And then, you know, LeBron against an East team in the finals. L.A. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and obviously I I still think Michael Jordan's the greatest of all time over LeBron. I think if (laughs) – At Nick Kuhl's. I think (laughs) if if LeBron goes the rest of his career without a title, I think it becomes a more obvious debate or whatever. It kind of clears it. I think more people are going to accept that Michael Jordan was truly greater. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if he wins another title or two, I think it gets harder to, to cl- yeah, it gets harder. It gets to... tougher to call. Yeah, but I think it. If he was to win a title with this team this year, I I could maybe put it up there. Yeah. If he brings in Durant and you know so, some other big talents, like yeah, I, I mean, he I did that. Think, but again, that's yeah. another that's another example of him just going to another team, buying a bunch of pieces around him, and then doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. I mean, yeah, and, and and to an extent, you know, it's. It's tough to always have these debates anyways because the league is so different now, right? right? I mean, it's it's really no, it's a league where different. you can shift entire conferences right. just with, like, the snap of your with fingers. With an offseason. Yeah, with an offseason, and you can do that. Um, much I mean, wasn't there that picture of uh, – I forgot what team it was, but it was, like, a Western Con- – or an Eastern Conference All-Star team or Western Con- – and it was literally, like, 20 of the 24 guys in the picture were, like, on different teams yeah. now. Like, yeah. And yeah. It, it was, like, the 2016 team. Like, yeah. it, 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 it just happens like that where, yeah. like – the 2016 uh, Olympics, like you have guys like uh, Jimmy Butler, who's been on two different teams after right. that. You have right. Kyrie Irving, who went to a different team. It, it changes Everybody's so quickly. Around. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even with the best of the best, not yeah. just the you so, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, at that point, it's hard. It's hard to make that argument, but that's where I, you know you. I at least with me, you kind of got to go with Jordan, just because right. he did it with. Okay, sure, you got Rodman and you got Pippen, but. And okay, Kerr, if you guys really want to. Uh, Horace sure. Grant. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Will but, Purdue. No. <laughs> hey, you know where Will Purdue went? Purdue. Anchor down, baby. Oh. Vanderbilt. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, so, di- <laughs> so on that note, different league. Uh, tough to compare the two. But if yeah, if LeBron can get one, especially with this team, you kind of got to put him yeah. in that conversation without a yeah. doubt. Yeah. All right, moving on. Buy, sell. Let's move to the East. Okay. Orlando Magic. Sell. Sell, sell, sell. Home, sell, home sell. of the Mo. Sell, <laughs> sell the Magic. Okay. And by the by, no the trust buy. in Mo. By the by, okay. <laughs> I love Mo Bamba. Great player for Texas. Got it. I thought and you were I, gonna say I love Nick Vucevic. <laughs> <laughs> and I and, hold on. and I love this school. Okay, I love the University of Texas. But stop. Playing <laughs> Sheck West Mo Bamba. You the, the funny I've thing. I've had enough. UT kind of like when they played at games, we're like, yeah, like UT's kind of like we're over it. Well, because it's, because we, it's been yeah, big at UT since, since like the March. summer. Because yeah, because we're like <laughs> this is our guy. Yeah. Every other school discovered this song. Yeah. In like November, October, and all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, Mo. Bamba. Yeah. yeah. We know. It's we a little bit. Us. It's a little bit of like when. Uh, like for me, like I I was listening to the Migos like in like high school, yeah. And Ooh. so when they got big like a few years ago, everyone You're was like, like yeah. "Can you believe this?" I was like, well, yeah. "Yeah, no." Th- I mean, this is yeah. I yeah, yeah I can. Yeah. Like, and of course it's Austin, <laughs> who's the city. Was like, yeah, we, we yeah, we've been over uh, this song. come on. We we, yeah. we, we, we like this song before. It was yeah, cool. yeah, come on, West Virginia. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Stick to do you, have, do, you have any, do, you, do you have Uber <laughs> over there? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Literally any other college. Uh, every commercial break or like in between scene that you'll they get. Come back. Uh, uh, <laughs> shut up! I've had enough of Obama. <laughs> like, just wait. Like, our our pet band has learned 
Shaq <laughs> West did. Literally next year, every single band in college football will be playing Mo Bamba. Yeah. yeah, literally. Some schools will be like, it's like our unofficial fight song. We're like, no. Like, where did he go? Yeah. Texas. I love um, when, like, Aggies and Sooners are playing it. They're playing it, like, in the LSU game. They're, like, playing it, and the students are freaking out. You're like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, play our song. I mean, they, I mean the Aggies, the Aggies track, actual right? fight song is is a, a is a UT. That's true. There's more Texas, <laughs> Texas. than Texas. <laughs> It's a great oh, point. All right. Anyways, yeah, sell selling magic. The yeah, oh yeah, but they start Nick Vucevic and uh, Terrence Ross. Yeah, I'm yeah, selling. Yeah, sell the magic. <laughs> Sitting in the eighth spot, uh, Nuggets moving back to the, the West. Nugs. They're what third right now? Yeah, something uh, like that. Yeah. Um. I want to buy them. I kind of just buy for the them. sake of like, here's a fun novelty team that's not there a lot. Yeah, Colorado's a cool place. Yeah, I mean, I, have... I, I I sell them doing anything like, like in like the playoffs. playoffs, right? Run. I mean, they're, I think they're they're losing in the east in the Western Conference semis. Yeah, yeah, or, I think even or if they get like a tough, you know, First let's round. yeah, let's say yeah, the Rockets a, a seven get up, seed Spurs or the Rockets get up to a, like the five or like yeah. the, that's the four five. Oh, I can see, I see, yeah, four five. Just because, just because, uh, yeah. like Jokic is a guy who is really good in the regular season because he's right. an amazing offensive player yeah. as as your center, but he cannot guard his own shadow. No. So <laughs> I think, uh, and you see it all the time in the playoffs, like those guys just get played off the court. Right like, when yeah. when people when the people who know how to play defense are like, yeah. okay, I'm going to actually start trying. Yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, he's like a, the richest man's version of Enos Canner. It's like, <laughs> just like, yeah, super yeah, I mean, good on offense, yeah. but like, every time Nothing. down the court, like, Chris Nothing Paul is going to be like, yeah, give me give me the big white guy. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I, I think I sell them. And then also, like, Gary Harris is their second best player, Jamal Murray. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I'm not. Know. I mean, they're yeah. No, they're good. Yeah. I think they're gonna make the playoffs. I just don't. I don't buy them. Four, yeah. Maybe five. Yeah, I don't buy them doing anything. Maybe find big. a way to win. It, they'll be in a seven game series. I think without sure. a doubt. In the oh first yeah, round. they're they're winning like all the home games. Yeah. Like <laughs> yes, if they can get home field home court advantage, I think they have a chance of making it to the second round. Yeah, for sure. But that's about it. All right, you brought up Ennis Canner. Let's talk about his <laughs> former team, the Thunder. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 Yeah. yeah Holy I, cow. Bye. Um, I'm going to say this about the Thunder. Mm-hmm. Steven Adams, I love you. Oh. One and two. Oh, um, what a man. Look. <laughs> down on da. Yeah. Did you see <laughs> nah, him doing nah, nah. an American accent? Oh, it's so good. Yeah. It's so good. If I so good, t- I mean it's so bad. You can tell he's a guy who's uh, experienced America through Oklahoma. Through, <laughs> like, just through his Oklahoma <laughs> accent. He's doing a very specific Oklahoman <laughs> accent. Oh. That's so true. <laughs> I never even thought of Yeah. I mean, wow. he had a little bit of pit in there. Oh, but yeah. Then, and then, like, 15 or, well, not 15, like, eight years or however yeah, long no, of Oklahoma. Hey, that man's yeah. an Oklahoman. Um, <laughs> no, I, I will say this. Look, obviously, we know about the ferocity of Russell Westbrook and how great of a player he is. And you know the, you know, because Paul George, I think the he goat. is, I think he is a, a, a top player, yeah. a, an elite player in the NBA. But, you know, obviously, you know, playoff Pete cursed him. And uh, he cursed himself, really, <laughs> which is weird. But... So um, with my team's being cursed. Uh, maybe, it's, maybe, maybe am I the curse? Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Go to AM. Um, no, I no, I mean <laughs> I, I would do that to make AM lose. I mean, yeah, I mean take Vandy, one. I mean Vandy perennial bowl team now. Hey. So hey. Well per, I mean perennial for Vandy is like once every five years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Texas Bowl. Talking we'll we'll be talking college football bowls a little later. But uh no, I, I gotta I gotta buy and I just hope Paul George can be consistent in the in a playoff series because I I honestly thought last year they could have they could have done some real damage. You know yeah. what what happened to I mean not what happened to Paul George I I think we all know but like those Indiana team like he he people forget he took like one of the best like Heat teams to seven games yeah like like the two middle years of the Heat were Him like were Hibbert. like the two best right, that teams. Was, yeah that was yeah it was them. I mean the Pacers were the number one seed one year yeah, yeah it's Roy like Hibbert, it's baby. like what what happened <laughs> what happened to those guys Lance like yeah, they've all to and, all of them talk, <laughs> we don't oh, we actually Lance we, we do have the Pacers we'll talk about Pacers okay but, but yeah I mean. Like that, there for a long it's time. it's so weird. I mean, I is it is it the leg, uh, the broken leg thing? Like, is that why he's? It, yeah, but it's, it's not. It, there's like a big it, gap between like Pacers. It almost feels like it's a different. But it's like so the o- the only yeah. difference is that he doesn't get to the rack as much. Like he well, doesn't, he doesn't go get to there the, as fast. He yeah. used to be extremely, is that it? extremely okay. quick off the dribble. Right. Maybe, now yeah. he's a little more. Maybe I just tactical. answered it. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. it does see like. And it's almost like mental, almost. It's like right. when LeBron's like, 
like when uh, it's crunch time and he just pulls up, you're like, what are you doing? It's yeah. like that's what Paul George does every time right. he touches the ball. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I guess it is just like the leg. But yeah. I, I mean, I, hey, I think you can't have a fourth really quarter good. to remember without a first quarter to remember. Thanks. Thanks. Dollars. <laughs> Dollars. I'm going to go buy a Lexus now. <laughs> This uh, this segment sponsored by I don't know if I can say that what's our Lexus sponsored by Lexus if you want to somebody tag Lexus in the comments and I'll take five bucks we'll like, just, like I'll promote y'all just, just give me a car send me a Lexus no, just give me the bow, like, <laughs> the bow. Yeah. I'll, I'll put the bow like on like this yeah. sponsored by Lexus give us a keychain yeah, podcast to remember right. give us a hat <laughs> at least finale to remember <laughs> but yeah I, I think going back to Oklahoma City I think. Last year, there was kind of a lack of chemistry just bringing in. I mean, you throw Paul George in there. You throw Carmelo in there. But it feels like there's... <laughs> I thought you were going to say, you throw Paul George in there. You throw Carmelo out of there. <laughs> well, thank goodness. They, but, yeah, it feels like there's finally some chemistry there. And, like, I mean, last night they beat the, the Jazz. Westbrook doesn't have a good game. But yeah. they're to the point where Westbrook doesn't have a good game, but he's still impacting it mm-hmm. by his, you know, his passing, his, you know, just enthusiasm and yeah. how many Effort, how many heart, how many years do we have to go grit. back before we can say the thunder won a game where uh russell westbrook didn't play well it, right. it feels like they like depend on him to play yeah. well for, since kd left yeah well and that that's why getting paul george was so big because yeah. the year he won the mvp and then to when resign him. him that's to right. resign him that was crazy. big well i think and that that's the thing well that I, 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 I tell you what thunder about. fans like that's a big community there like it's kind of like it's similar to what you see with the Spurs of like kind of like not a huge market. Yeah. But like a city who loves the team because it is the one team that they have. I also yeah. think it's interesting, like Paul George, obviously he's from well, he's not really from LA. He's from Palmdale. It's not actually LA. But uh, uh not to know. not to get all West Coast Sean on <laughs> it. It's not actually LA. But then he goes to Fresno, not a big uh, Fresno State, not right. a big city. Right. Then he goes like gets drafted. Yes. Then gets drafted by uh <laughs> They've taken on the uh, fighting Herm go, Edwards. Go we'll dogs. be breaking that down a little go bit. Dogs. And then uh, they, ooh, 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 and then he goes to. <laughs> y'all, sorry, sorry. Are we done with the <laughs> the Fresno State podcast? Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> then he goes to the Pacers, another small town. Then he goes to OKC. Maybe he's just now he's more comfortable in yeah, small towns where be. he's just a small town guy. Could be that. And then, like I was gonna say to your point, I think, you know, it was. The OKC season was doomed last year when you heard, Hey, OP, they tell me you gotta come off the bench. <laughs> that's when it was doomed. Uh, that's a horrible Carmelo, but that's when it was doomed. Hey, 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 they they say I gotta come, come off the bench. bench. Come off the bench, Carmelo. The way, the way he, the, the, how much stank he put into bench is so funny. Like, that, ugh. That's what I'm saying. But I think there is legitimate chemistry that yeah. they have with these two stars. In well, and, and right now, Andre Roberson still isn't even playing with the team. When when he's finally back from injury, that man is a defensive beast. Right, and that was that was a big. That's what hurt them a lot in the, playoffs in the playoffs last, last, year, last year. Was not having that defensive just to I, go down or, and shut and, down Donovan and Mitchell. I, I feel like they last year they just weren't they they weren't deep enough because no. they go they trade two rotation guys for Paul George, they trade right. two rotation right. guys for Carmelo, Tanner, Dougie McBuckets, yeah, Oladipo, yeah, they, and uh, Sabonis. And Sabonis, right. And so you trade four guys, you bring in two, although. Yeah. I mean, they might be better, except for Carmelo. They, th- but you know, the depth. That's something that the Thunder then, boys struggle. And then with. you lose. And then you lose Roberson before they make the trade. Yeah, yeah, lose, yeah. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I but yeah, I'm buying. Buy, I'm they're buying they're for real. All right. How about how about the Bucks? Giannis Antetokounmpo. So when we say buy, buy, when we I, say buy on this, what do we? Are we going? I think I I would say East, as East Eastern Conference Finals, like contenders to win the yeah, Eastern Conference. Yeah, con- con- I I think the East. Because I'm selling there. I'm I, selling on them. I can see. The Conference. I can see four teams winning the East. I can see the 76ers, yep. Celtics, Bucks, Raptors. Raptors. Yeah. Yeah. So I and I think they all have pretty. You know, I can't really. I, I, just, I can I talk myself into all of them. I don't think the Bucks are deep enough. Yeah, I think. I think cr- when it comes to playoff time. Yeah. Uh, I, I just don't think Giannis I like Middleton's is enough. game for the yeah. Bucks. I think, yeah. a, I think he's a great player to compliment. Oh, but what, they need. What, they, happened, they're, they're gonna, what happened with this George Hill trade? What what happened there? What a first George. and a second for George Hill? Like I don't know. D- d- does Milwaukee st- like? Do they still think it's 2013? Like what <laughs> what's going on? I don't even care if it's 2013. That's still a lot <laughs> yeah, to give up. Like just, yeah, it's insane. It could be 1982. Yeah. <laughs> We're in the hospital for yeah, George. George, George Hill. Hill. George <laughs> walk up to his dad first and a second. <laughs> and, jo- and John Henson. Yeah, sure. Have him. <laughs> sure. Uh, <laughs> 
Yeah. But yeah, I I I still I think that they can make the Eastern Finals, so I'll I'll buy them. I think I think the way. Bucks are still a piece away. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I think maybe even like a sixth man away or something like that. Yeah, it doesn't not, even have to like they don't have to bring in, bring in a huge yeah, player. Yeah, because I I but do think something off the bench. I do think Chris Milton like with Giannis, that's enough. Like right. that that's, that's but they just need even if they just get uh Dante DiVincenzo to step up or they get uh Pat Connington to step up or I don't mean to just be naming white guys, but just <laughs> any any guy off the bench. Right. That, like, if they can just get them to st- step up and be yeah. play over their head for, like, two series. Yeah, I that, think yeah that's can. what you need. All right, final team, Pacers. We talked about them a little bit. Depot. I'm, I'm going to... Turner. We buying on Turner, boy? Oh, no, I'm selling. Look him at half, hey, half mass, half mass. Oh, yeah, half, half mass. I, I, I'm going to buy this team. I don't know what I'm buying them for. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like they're like them. making the playoffs. In- yes, I think they could be. I think they're a team that could make the Eastern Conference, make the final Eastern Conference Finals. I don't think they're a team to win the Eastern Conference Finals. I had to scoot in a bit. Maybe I think they could make that. the Eastern Maybe Conference Finals. Hurt. Yeah, like I think, I think they have a chance. Like they, I don't know. To, to you go gotta, you gotta buy a team for like no reason, right? Impulse yeah. buy. Impulse. It's an impulse so that's buy. Your impulse yeah. Buy? Right. Black 30% Friday. Off. Black Friday deal. <laughs> Black Friday deal. The Indiana Pacers. I don't, know. I mean, I don't they, even they, know why I bought they, it. They've got a they got a hell of a home crowd, and right. I think that right. could affect the playoff series, obviously. But Eastern Conference Finals, I don't know. I think they I think they push through the first round with a little bit of brevity and ease, and then after that, it's gonna be. Six games, five yeah. games. I, game I just, I just sell them because I can't see them beating the Raptors. I can't see them being the Celtics, Sixers. and I can't be, right. see them being the Sixers. I can see them being the Bucks, but uh, you know, play some good defense on Giannis. Right. Just Middleton has a slump. You win. Like I can, yeah. I can see that. Uh, Oladipo goes off, but I just can't see him beating. Like, who do they have that's going to guard and beat Miles Turner? Like. Miles Turner isn't that good. He's, like he's not there yet. Whoa. Like whoa. No, I this is no. It was all coming to a yet. He's not that good yet. <laughs> also, also, I never Dexter, just to Dexter. be just to be honest, I never like really fully claimed Miles Turner. Yeah, I mean, that's he fair, went to man. school at Texas when I like right after I didn't get into Texas. Mm-hmm. I had to go to UT. So I was like, eh. Not like not, so I didn't really watch that's any fair. of his games, that's and fair. I I forget <laughs> that he goes to Texas or he went to Texas. Texas. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Last question, really quick. Um, college football playoff. Who's yeah. winning it? I got I got an upset for you. Oh no! Don't say Oklahoma. Alabama. <laughs> uh, oh what what what? Uh, they have this runner up for the Heisman, so they're they're hun- oh, okay. hungry. To, uh... <laughs> you know who else? Was... I need to see you do it. <laughs> you know who else was the runner up for a Heisman? Vince Young. Colt McCoy. Colt McCoy. Well, that hurts my case. But guys that then go Chase and win Daniel. win the t- title. It's like third place runner up. Toby Gearhart, uh, <laughs> Christian McCaffrey, <laughs> Andrew Luck, a whole bunch of guys from Stanford. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I think Alabama. I think it's Al- I. I think the only team that can beat them is Clemson, and I just don't think with uh, with Lawrence. I I just don't think he's ready. I, yeah. I think he's good. He's good. He's good when he has the talent advantage. He's good enough to like not mess things up. Yep. Uh, and to like pour it on teams like Pitt. Right. Uh, but I, I just don't think he has, uh, you know, he just doesn't have the big game experience to take on a team yeah. like Alabama. Think about the guys that beat Alabama. It's right. Manziel, it's Watson. It, it's guys that, like, not just are proven commodities that they're good, proven commodities on a hot, big stage that they're good. So I just don't my, see that. My happening. hot take, Notre Dame beats Clemson. Oh, no. boy. That nope. would be. Oh, wait, yep. wait, you sucking up to Mark Stoll have, Jr.? <laughs> I've been. Stoll. Here's the deal. They I are... have been selling Clemson all year long. <laughs> yeah. For so long. I said they weren't going to make the playoffs. I said they're overrated. This is like the last chance for them to lose. It's going to be <laughs> right here. Solid. But like, on it, like, Notre Dame is such a, like, compl- and, and they're, they're, they're honestly a, like a Clemson Florida State of the past, who's mm-hmm. not great, but they find ways to win. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah, a Notre Dame of the, fa- the last Notre right. Dame team to play for a title. But, but yeah. even like, they, they, Brian Kelly was asked about like comparing the teams. He's like, that team had stars. There's no star on this Notre Dame team. Yeah, mm-hmm. there isn't. But they're very like you know, the the sum is greater than it parts. Yeah, mm-hmm. and and because of that, I, I kind of like that against against Clemson. Lawrence and yeah, I think it comes down to Clemson's defense because that's their strength right now. If Clemson's defense can, you know, hold Notre Dame, then they have no shot. But if if Notre Dame can find a way to score, I think they win that game mm. and get killed by Alabama. Yeah, yeah I, I, I I agree with you. If if Clemson holds them under twenty one, yeah, they Clemson wins. Right. Uh, 
I but I I I do think I mean they do have a couple like I don't I'm not sure if they're stars. Was that was that actually mean in college football? <laughs> but uh, yeah. but like Drew Tranquil is really good. They yeah. have good defensive linemen. Ian Book stepped up. But yeah. I I just don't I just don't think that they're. Uh, that caliber team to beat Clemson. If, if they're playing Oklahoma, I think they can beat yeah. Oklahoma. I just don't think they can beat the two better teams. Yeah. All right. Aria, you got <clears throat> Turn the mic up a little bit. Roll <laughs> Tide! Oh, my voice is cracking. I, just really, I can mute people. You've been muted. Wow. Roll Tide Roll. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> wow. Roll Tide Roll. We got a regular Tony Reale over here. <laughs> Yeah. Minus one point. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think, you know, to, to Sean's point, exactly. I think there's yeah. this uh, there's this fire building up into a well, I, I think a the fire way and desire. Nick Saban could not be happier <laughs> than having Tua not win the Heisman. Yeah. You know, and, and the way that the Georgia game wasn't close, and they almost, like, that's what he wants. He wants yeah. adversity because, you know, the whole rat poison, like, like but he doesn't want the team to get co- get complacent, which is, you know, I, I get that. It, it could be very easy to yeah, do at no, Alabama. Oh, you you see that at every other school in the nation, they get complacent. Texas Tech after the <laughs> after the Mike Crabtree right. year, they got complacent. Every team gets they they won the Gator Bowl and got right. complacent the next year. Right, yeah. Like like every team gets complacent except Alabama. Except so you for that know, one you know year, Nick Saban was year. like kind of happy that they almost lost to Georgia. That Tua yeah. didn't win the Heisman because he wants that motive. And be, of course, it's perfect that they're going up against Kyler Murray. Yeah. So it's like ultimate revenge. For Tua, guys, ultimate I, I want to ask this. I want to ask this, especially since right. Tua uh, didn't win the Heisman. I'm I'm assuming that the people in Alabama are probably going to feel a certain type of way. Maybe the defense feels a certain type of way. That's their quarterback. But um, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I want to ask, what do you think Kyler's performance is going to be like against That's Alabama? A great, I have no idea. I, I think it's he's going to be better than people think. Mm. I I think Alabama, but I think OU can actually make it closer than people think. I, I that's I, that's what I want to happen is for people to be like okay it can be maybe Big Twelve has no defense but they have a lot of offense. Oh, uh, we compete. we saw that last year uh, Oklahoma yeah, against uh, right, Georgia. Against Georgia. Yeah, and yeah. I think it'll be something similar. To I that. think it, I think it'll be similar. It just I don't think it goes to overtime. I don't think it's yeah. that close. I think it's I that. Think Baker I think they do a better quarterback. I think they do that. I didn't think they do that maybe for the first half, first three quarters, and then Bama pulls away at the end, wins by like. Fourteen to yeah. seventeen, but I tell you I, what, it, I think yeah. that's the kind of game. If Kyler starts making turnovers, starts making mistakes early, the game's over. Yeah, I think I think that he doesn't know how to respond when because I pick, he's never had to respond. Yeah, he never lost in high school. Yeah, I mean, he never lost. When he in lost high to school. Texas, that was the first game that, he had lost. It's like I don't know, Pee Wee football. If he yeah, lost, he might. <laughs> I, to my knowledge, you know, like, yeah, <laughs> Kyle, Kyler Murray, please send in your uh, your record from Pee Wee from football. middle school. Uh, we need to find. We need to fact check his last loss. But uh, Texas. that's why, like, when people are like, oh, "I don't like his attitude," he's a little stuck up. Of course, he's stuck up. He was the man in high school. Yeah, like he, he was, never lost. He was the like everyone. Everyone knows a like smaller version of that guy. Right. A small. Think about that. A smaller version of Kyler Murray. No, they know <laughs> a, a lesser version of yes, Kyler like five Murray. Five-year-old brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of like the guy that's just nice at everything. Right. Probably super smart too. Yeah. And like and they you know a lot of times they have an attitude problem. Yeah. You know <laughs> like yeah. so I I think Kyle, that's why he kind of gets a pass in my mm-hmm. book on like that. It's like I get it. Like right. I get it. Yeah. So that's going to be the thing for me. That's that was my biggest question going into this college playoffs yeah. because I mean if if let's say Oklahoma and that Big 12 offense it's so high octane and yeah. they somehow overpower Alabama, I think they win it all. I yeah. I, I don't think there's anybody stopping right. them. Right. Um Yeah, so, I th- I definitely think Lincoln uh, Riley can like scheme up, you know, to to where they play a little bit over their talent right. uh for for the Alabama game again, yeah. but like you can't do that for four quarters because no. the yeah. thing is Nick Saban can scheme up some stuff against you too, so yeah. you, you're not going to have the edge very often or very long if you haven't. Won. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, guys, thanks for joining us. Thank we'll you we'll us, get man. y'all on next semester. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Let's, let's do it. About. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Deuces, mom. I love you. <laughs> to Odell. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
We're going to close it out with a couple things. Um, first, a new segment, um, and this is called Fun Fact. Uh, the way that this segment works and is going to work, um, I think I'm just going to kind of make it a regular thing on the show, but basically where I go on Twitter, I look up Fun Fact, and the number one thing that comes up that is, like, cool, appropriate for radio, whatever, um, I'll read it. So today's Fun Fact, um, and, and y'all can, like, tag them or something like that. Uh, it comes from at hide underscore monkey. Fun fact of the day. If you live in France, it's illegal to name your pet pig Napoleon. So today's fun fact. Can't name your pig Napoleon if you live in France. So for those people in, living in France, don't do that. For those people not living in France who probably didn't know that, people in France probably do. But for those of you not living in France, if you ever moved to France, now you know. So there's that. Um, before we end this show, a uh, couple shout outs. First off, shout out to my granddad, Tom Fitch. The original Thomas Fitch, actually John Thomas Fitch, um, senior, turned 80 today. So happy birthday to, to him. Uh, you know, have to give all my love of sports to him and, and my dad. So happy birthday to him. Other shout out to the Longhorn Pod. They're listening to this. Super cool. Um, had a fun little Twitter encounter. They said something about somebody tweeted a picture of Rodrigo Blankenship and uh, Cameron Dicker talking about, you know, some of the two best special teams people going head to head. And they said it's the foremost uh, special teams podcast, you know, we can't be more excited. And I responded as, as y'all know, big special teams guy. I said, well, I, I have to disagree it. Thomas Fitch sports show has a sp special teams minute every episode. Um, and James Boswell, uh, you know, recurring guest respond. He goes, as a fan of both, I have to give the edge to Thomas Fitch. Then Longhorn pod responded. Well, uh, Thomas Fitch just got a new subscriber. So Longhorn pod, if you're listening to this, a lot of respect for your work. Um, thanks for checking this out. Um, anyways, that's going to do it for the show. Remember, stay tuned later on in the week for the um, the college football bowl breakdown, pick them, whatever we call it. We'll, we'll think of a, a better name. But anyways, from the Thomas Fitch Sports Show, I'm Thomas Fitch. Hook em horns. Have a good semester. Break. Semester break. <laughs> Let go of everything.